None at all. None at all. Love yes. it. Well, let me sing up our audio, brother, and we'll kick right in. Sounds good. Chima, say what's up to Fire Nation and share something interesting about yourself that most people don't know. Hey, what's up, Fire Nation? I'm super excited to be here to share some um, music in blockchain technology and masterclass with you guys. The one thing that most people don't know about me is I'm actually a retired Army veteran. So I served in the Army for 15 years and I retired as a finance officer captain. Well, thank you for your service, Chima. Really appreciate it on this veteran-run podcast right here. And I'm pretty excited, Fire Nation, because Chima is going to talk about how blockchain stole the music notes and what it means for the music industry and so much more. So we're going to be having a great conversation with Chima about his past, about his present, about what he sees the future holding for him and other artists as well as entrepreneurs. And let's just start with blockchain being the future of the music industry. Is that the case, Chima? It certainly is. Blockchain is on the news as of late. As a matter of fact, most people probably watching the stock market go down right now also heard about something that's going up and it's called Bitcoin. So that's just not what blockchain holds. Blockchain for artists, music industry professionals, and even folks that are selling merchandise holds the key to what's called smart contracts, which is a way to transact and have uh, visibility as a form of a ledger. So as a matter of fact, that is happening right now, but it hasn't taken off to the extent that I foresee it going to, and that's why we're holding this blockchain just stole the music note uh, masterclass, just to educate folks and let them know the possibilities that blockchain presents to them. Well, let's maybe start with that then. What exactly is blockchain? Like, just kind of break that down for the listeners, and then let's kind of move into whether blockchain can be tokenized for music and maybe some examples of that. That's fantastic. So blockchain, basically what it is, um, as you know, we're heading into what's called the Internet Web 4.0. It's a way to have digital certificates when computers communicate basically. And, and the level of uh, security that you put into blockchain is going to determine to what extent the computers communicate. And then within that backbone, you can then have applications that are layered with that blockchain. And that's why I'm specifically focused on something called smart contracts. Basically, it's like you doing contracts between two parties, but in this case, you have variables that's going to determine what would happen if a certain uh, transaction takes place. So that's kind of, you know, general term what blockchain is and, and what the uh, future is for the music industry. In so let's regard. give some examples about what it would look like to actually be quote unquote tokenized for music. So maybe give a little breakdown on what does it mean to be tokenized and some examples of people that have done it, are doing it, or will be doing it soon. Great. Yes, tokenization is basically solving a problem and then turning that into something that people could participate in. For example, if you wanted to solve a problem that's in terms of royalties, say for example, you have music on Spotify for, and it plays and you get streaming royalties, however, it takes a while for you to actually get paid that royalty that's where tokenization can come into place, where you write a smart contract that's tied within an actual token that's a coin. So whenever people listen to the music and you earn royalties, it would then trigger a payment using that coin as a payment platform. People that are actually doing this right now are not that many. There's a, a, a company by the name of Vets and that particular company actually is uh, when i did a little research is run by the legacy music industry and what i'm trying to get most independent artists to realize is that you don't necessarily have to go with the traditional record companies to leverage blockchain and also be independent in today's uh, music industry i'm also working on a project called pod bum coin that's essentially me trying to tokenize 
using blockchain to help artists uh, become more independent. So that's kind of an example, a broad-based example, um, you know, 30,000 feet. But uh, in, with respect to other industries, say I wanted to solve a problem, so for example, we live here in the Tampa Bay area in Florida, and there's a lot of congestion with respect to traffic. Say I wanted to solve a problem that would enable people to actually, you know, buy into, say, a coin that's tokenized that gives them an incentive to maybe write public transportation, I would set up a tokenized uh, coin and using the blockchain ecosystem. Now, what I would like to explain is there's two different ways you can develop coins uh, within blockchain uh, using different platforms. So most people that I know use uh, the Ethereum um, uh, program and uh, it's this is free to develop um, applications and coins. Um, and again, like I started the introduction, we're talking about a Bitcoin. Bitcoin just hit 8,000, uh, believe it or not, uh, per share. Um, so people can develop using Bitcoin, but for the most blockchains and tokenized platform that I see there under the coins, they are using the Ethereum uh, system to do it. So maybe let's get a little specific here about the ability for artists to do things for income generation in the future. Like what are you seeing coming down the road? Like you mentioned something about, you know, songs being tweeted for income generation. Like what does that look like? And what are some other opportunities you're seeing you know, for artists, but again, Fire Nation, I hope you're listening and really realizing that this is for artists, but this is also for entrepreneurs that are creating movements that are building an audience. So speak to that, Chima. Fantastic uh, question. As a matter of fact, the best way for artists to take full advantage of this uh, ecosystem that's pretty much at its infancy is to start off by um, creating a, a wallet, a digital wallet. The reason I say that's the first thing to do is it will get them comfortable with the whole blockchain and how uh, the ledger actually works. So when I say ledger, uh, it's not just about royalties, but it's it's very transparent. For example, if you were to cash a check and you know it takes a while for you to balance your checkbook and and your checkbook typically isn't visible, nor is that checkbook visible to to outsiders. But with with blockchain, artists can have a wallet, utilize the actual address that's within that wallet to start transferring um, digital currencies back and forth. That gets them comfortable with the whole idea of using blockchain and uh, e-currencies basically. The next step and what I would recommend that artists do right away is to set up an online platform, even an entre entrepreneur, that's uh, where they could actually sell their digital music. So, for example, I uh, kind of deal with Shopify a little bit. You go on Shopify, say you record a, a track, you put that track up there, and you have a way to collect payments that's tied to, say, a wallet, um, coin-based. Then what could typically happen with if your fans come out there and make purchases, that transaction would then be utilized uh, the ledger system to to actually pay and receive receive your money. The reason I use I say Shopify is one of the problems that I've been very very concerned about is how long it takes to actually get paid when you actually sell a service or a, a physical product. Um, and I'm not plugging Shopify, but it takes typically days for that to happen compared to the other platforms that are out there. Um, so using that that uh scenario, I can foresee a future where artists would completely bypass the traditional stores or the traditional streaming platforms in terms of actually having their music and their merchandise being put out there for sales and also how fast they could, they could get paid. So I foresee a future where the record companies are not going to be as powerful as they are right now, because uh, if you really think about it, most of the creation, distribution, and uh, promotion of music is done on a global scale. And it's about five record companies that pretty, pretty much, uh, I don't want to call it a monopoly, but for, the, for all intensive purposes, that's what it is. Because if you look at how digital music has trended over the last uh, 10 to 15 years, the Silicon Valley companies that came into the space 
had to sign contracts with the big record companies. And so that's why you have a royalty system that's what I call Jurassic. It's really old and it's ripe for disruption. And I think that's what blockchain, cryptocurrency, and smart contracts is going to do for artists going forward. So Fire Nation, we're talking a lot about what is going to be the future, but we're not talking about 30, 40 years down the line. We're talking just over the edge. I mean, this is cutting edge stuff. This is going to happen. And for those artists and just entrepreneurs in general, you need to start understanding this lingo, understanding what blockchain is, understanding what it means to be tokenized, understanding how to use all of these great features that are coming down the road to benefit you and your business. And we haven't even started with the value bombs. Chima is going to drop into some great, great knowledge when we get back from thanking our sponsors. So Chima, we're back and I want to talk about what specifically can we do right now? Like what can artists, what can art what can entrepreneurs, what can labels do right now to take advantage of this new era that's truly unfolding before our eyes? That's a great call to action. What I would encourage a lot of artists, labels do right now is to actually somewhere within their website or e-commerce platforms or their social media, they should have maybe a blog or something talking about blockchain and then use the hashtag cryptocurrency bitcoin ethereum to get people to also recognize that you're actually interested in 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 these particular innovative technologies after having that out there what's going to happen is when people start searching for their music or trying to engage with them uh, through social media they're going to start popping up it's being relevant. And then the other thing they need to do is, uh, what I encourage them to do first is research companies that is going to enable them to develop either a token or their own personal wallet. Uh, personally, what I did was I, I reached out to um, it's a software that's, that's, that's that I kind of used to build my first token. Um, I learned how to create, you know, computer code by just getting out there and, and looking for knowledgeable folks that can share um, the information with you. And as a matter of fact, the first way, first time I heard about blockchain was through a meetup. So I went to a meetup, a local meetup, and people were talking about uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency. And I started thinking about how myself as an artist can leverage this technology. And it's taken me a year and a half to actually understand and also incrementally implement what's actually going on. So I highly encourage folks to get out there on social media, on their e-commerce platforms and start talking about blockchain and then go out there and figure out who the key influencers or local folks around their neighborhood or city towns uh, are when it comes to blockchain and cryptocurrency. Join some meetup groups, meet some folks and actually take incremental steps to, to develop your platform. Now, there's one thing that has been so painful for artists, for authors, for entrepreneurs for decades and decades, Chima, and that is royalties. So talk to us about royalties. Do they matter when it comes to blockchain in this new era? I significantly doubt that royalties in the blockchain era have reached parity. By that, I mean, if you look at 20 years ago, when an artist actually sells music, it takes between six months to a year to actually see your royalty check. But in this era, you have technologies such as smart contract that can actually program and pay artists, bands, and even record labels their share of royalties. Okay, and I'll give you an example. Um, about 20 years ago, uh, there was a company called ARC and the royalties that they were trying to get record companies to sign up for was something called home taping royalties. And that was basically, remember when they had cassette tapes? Oh yeah. Yeah, so if you recorded uh, something at home uh, and copied your cassette tapes, the artists weren't getting paid any royalties. So this company, ARC, is based in the Virginia area, developed, uh, actually they lobbied and had uh, Congress passed an act that will allow home taping royalties and uh, my company uh, Hangout Recordings was part of the uh, 
initial signatory. So I just got something in the mail, email today, telling me to validate my royalties uh, on an international basis so they could go ahead and pay uh, me royalties for the songs that I've written. So that's still, in my view, a, an old way of, of uh, implementing royalty payments. Perhaps a company such as ARC could actually use smart contracts that's tied to the record companies and the artists that are signatories to this particular act. And then when they uh, when when the songs get played, they might have some kind of a digital watermark that would then trigger a smart contract to pay those folks um, their royalties. So this is the future that I'm talking about when it comes to royalty payments and how blockchain can actually not just change and disrupt the industry, but also allow artists uh, the creative freedom to create music and continue to uh, to share something with the world. Well, let's talk podcasting. It is kind of my favorite topic. How can podcasts like Podbum and Coin, how are they going to be able to be integrated into marketing and promotions mix? It's interesting that you mentioned that. Um, that uh, this is how I actually got into the whole digital space is by podcasting. Myself as an artist, I was helping other artists create podcasts. Um, I was living in Los Angeles at that time, uh, trying to quote unquote break into the record industry. But uh, that was easier said than done. So what I started doing was picking up alternative skills that would enable me to stand out. And one of those skills was learning how to podcast. So if an artist say releases a muse or uh, a track, but they don't have the sufficient uh, wherewithal to promote it and you know because it costs a lot of money to do the marketing and promotion. One of the best ways I think that I've seen that actually works because I had teamed with a company called Sonic Bids and I did a, um, a podcast series for artists there is to actually release the songs as a podcast and have maybe a podcast host uh, do a DJ mix with most of those songs where it's released because then a lot of listeners looking for new songs can actually discover this new artist through podcasts and then within the podcast show notes you can actually have a link that then uh, that's tied directly say to the e e store where where the consumers can actually you know buy the music and also one thing i would like to mention is i just released a book it's called uh you know this secret sauce behind podcasting and what it is is just me put getting out there trying to help people um, to discover how to podcast on on their own. And that book is available on Amazon. Fire Nation, we've been talking about a lot of stuff today. We've been talking about blockchain, about how to actually stay cutting edge and do things like tweet your songs for revenue and different content in general and you know how you can actually take advantage of this new era whether you know you're an entrepreneur an artist an author all these different things because listen blockchain tokenizing yourself your business this is all happening around you right now it's time to get onto this trend before you fall behind this trend. So, Chima, with everything that we've been talking about today, what's one thing you want to make sure our listeners really get from our audio masterclass? Then give us a call to action, how we can find out more about you, and then we'll say goodbye. Terrific. So the one thing I like Fire Nation to get from this whole masterclass is that you as – or an entrepreneur or somebody that's thinking about starting a business have the power to actually make it happen. In other words, you're going to have some naysayers that will look at new technologies such as blockchain and they will tell you why it's so risky and why it's not quite there yet for you to take action. But I'm here to let you know that uh, it's within you. You got to kind of believe in yourself and then go ahead and take action. If you want to get more information about what I'm working on, um, you can just um, follow me on Instagram at Podbum. That's P-O-D-B-U-M. You can check out Podbum.com and get some more information. And also, like, uh, follow me on Twitter uh, at Podbum. Fire Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And you've been hanging out with CN and JLD today. So keep up the heat and head over to eofire.com. Type Chima, that's C-H-I-M-A, in the search bar. His show notes page will pop up with everything that we've been talking about today. These are the best show notes in the biz. Of course, you can follow him at Podbum on Instagram podbum.com is his website and Chima I just want to say thank you for sharing value bombs with Fire Nation today for that we salute you brother and we'll catch you on the flip side it's been my pleasure 
JLD. Thank you. Boom, brother. That's a wrap. Way to rock the mic today. Thank you very much. This was exciting. That was exciting. And dude, we're talking about really important stuff here. I mean, blockchain, tokenizing. I mean, this is stuff that entrepreneurs, artists, they need to get their heads wrapped around. It's the future. Absolutely. Cool, man. Well, listen, I'll send you an email the week before this is going live, as well as the day of with all the links. I enjoy chatting with you and have a wonderful day. Likewise. Thank you. Take care, brother. Okay.